Morning Football on KLST. Brought to you by Randall Motors. Welcome on into Friday Night Football Week 4 edition of Cooler Friday Night Lights this week, which means fall is hopefully here. We can only cross our fingers. I'm Ryan Campo. We'll hear from Sabrina Hoover in just a little bit. We kick off the evening with the Lakeview Chiefs back home once again, looking to snap their two-game losing skid. A pair of one and two teams meeting tonight. Lakeview hosting Lubbock High over at San Angelo Stadium. You're going to see this a lot right here, attacking the Lubbock corners. Jalen Chavez launches one up. Braden Picard. Catches the pass in stride, scores the Chiefs' first touchdown of the game. It's the defense's turn. Noah Rios lurking in the middle of the field, snags the interception, takes it up the sideline before getting tackled. Game knotted up at seven. Almost the copy and paste play on offense. This time, Austin Perez pump fakes. He'll launch a bomb downfield. Michael Duran takes it to the house. 65 yards. Chiefs now up. 15-7. Chiefs passing game really effective in this one early and often. Perez rolls to his right, throws a dart to Picard, scores his second touchdown of the game. Lakeview, however, falls in a thriller tonight over at San Angelo Stadium, 43-41. Set it on up to Class 6A. The Central Bobcats hitting the road this week, first to two, looking to replicate something they did two weeks ago. Bounce back following a loss to get back to 500 on the season. Central making the three-and-a-half-hour bus ride over to Belton, just south of Waco, north of Austin. To take on the Tigers for just a second time in school history. Belton off to a 3-0 start. 5A Division II team. Cats beat them a year ago. Central, though, falls 41-38 tonight. Cats back on the road once again next week. They'll travel to Abilene Wiley. To Class 3A we go. Never back down. Never give up. And that's what Wall certainly did a week ago. A race in a 14-point deficit on the road against Jim Ned before falling by just three to longtime rival. Wall back home tonight after two weeks on the road hosting the Greyhounds of Peaster. First quarter following a Greyhound turnover. Wall strikes first. Gunner Diller, the pitch Hagen Barbie gets to the outside, tips hose his way into the end zone for the early Hawk touchdown. Still 7-0 Hawks. It's the defense that steps up once again for the big play. Peaster quarterback in all sorts of trouble. Throws it right over the middle, right in the hands of Garen Wiggins for the INT. He'll take it deep inside Greyhound territory. Final play of the first hat, first quarter, rather. What a way to end it. Gunnar Dillard fakes out everyone on the Greyhound defense. He walks in his way for six, 14-0 wall. Here's a Nathan Pepper touchdown. Hawks dominate from start to finish tonight. They get back in the win column, a shutout, 42-0 over in Peaster. To Brady we go this evening, a pair of Class 3A Division II teams looking for the first win of the 2023 season. Brady won big last year against the Lions. These two have met up since 2018. Tonight, the Bulldogs get the first win of the season and first win for head coach Jaron Roberts with the program 26-21 over Dublin. The last two weeks, there's been a lot of noise surrounding the TLCA St. Angelo Eagle football team. Despite that, the boys in blue and white put that aside. They've rallied off two straight wins on the road. TLCA San Angelo back home tonight hosting undefeated 3A Division I foe Ingram Moore. First quarter, Eagles down 3-0, not anymore. Lane Honey finds Colin Taylor in the back of the end zone for the game's first score, 7-3 TLCA. Still first quarter, still 7-3. Natavion Sykes gets the handoff, quick move at the line of scrimmage, has some running room, cuts to the outside. He said, Syke, you ain't catching me. Natavion's rushing touchdown makes it 14-3. Still... TLCA, second quarter, 14-10. Honey finds Taylor right away, gets to the outside to the defender, uses his speed to get to the end zone. The Mason Punchers have downright dominated on Friday nights. Doing the same the first three weeks of play, even though the group for head coach Michael McLeod's team this year, a little bit younger, but still the same outcome. An all Concho Valley matchup tonight over at the Puncher Dome. Mason takes down Cristobal, making it a perfect 5-for-5 five five against the Cougs with the victory tonight. Cristobal hosting Brady next week. Mason traveling over to Ballinger. District 14-2A, Division 1. The Junction Eagles hosting Cross Plains tonight for homecoming. Here go the Buffs won in their first ever meeting between the two schools. Tonight, Junction dominates from start to finish, picking up their third straight win. 41-6 over Cross Plains. Junction hitting the road next week when they travel over to Grape Creek. Coming up on Friday Night Football, Sterling City, El Dorado, Water Valley. All in action one final time in non-district play before their buys ahead of week six district matchups. Plus, a 2A versus 3A crossover tonight in Ozona. The Lions look to get back to 500 while Grape Creek looks to snap their long losing skid. Stay with us. You're watching Friday Night Football right here on KLST. You're watching Friday Night Football on KLST.
Welcome back into Friday Night Football. Mother Nature causing a schedule change earlier this week as thunderstorms knocked the power out of the scoreboard in Grape Creek. So they had to move their game over to Ozona. Tonight over at Lions Stadium, Grape Creek still the home team taking on Ozona early on in this one. Ozona looking to strike first. QB Hudson Fowler with the long pass across the field finds his man Michael Daniels in the end zone. Lions on top in this one. Ozona looking to capitalize off that momentum. A bullet pass by Fowler in met in the hands of Braden Wenius for the Eagles interception for Grape Creek. Ozona back deep. Fowler looking for a man. Slingshots it down the field perfectly in the hands of Dusty Smith. No one there. He's wide open. That puts the Lions up 14-0. Got a leg shot of the ref. Pretty nice. That won't stop us. Ozona back in the red zone. Christian Villarreal going to walk into this one with ease. Lions lead at 21-0, and they dominate tonight. 57-22 over Grape Creek. We begin the night with four remaining Concho Valley teams that still have a goose egg in the loss column, including the Sonora Broncos, who have looked like a well-oiled machine the first three weeks of play. Team they've dominated in the history meeting up on the gridiron. The Broncos welcoming the Bucks from Alpine into town tonight. Sonora continuing their dominance over them. Broncos head to Harper next week before their bye in week six. It's been impressive what the Sterling City Eagles have done since realignment when they found out they're moving up from six man to 11 man. Seven and five season ago, trip to the area around last year. This year, they're off to a 3-0 start. Tonight, hosting the Plowboys from Roscoe dominated them a season ago. Tonight, much closer, but Roscoe would pull away from Sterling City late, handing the Eagles their first loss of the season, 27-28. Excuse me, 27-14, the final. Eagles off next week ahead of district beginning in week six. Out of district 5-2A Division II, the Eldorado Eagles, who suffered their first loss a week ago, back on the road this week over in San Saba. Meet, these two meet for the third year in a row. Eldorado would score late in the fourth to take a 2014 lead. That'd be the final in this one. Eldorado, a big-time road victory tonight over San Saba. Tough loss a week ago for Water Valley, falling at home to Mines, but the Cats hitting the road tomorrow afternoon to Odessa to take on the Cougars of Odessa Compass in a battle of teams sitting at one and two so far this season. Water Valley won 34-0. They'll look to do the same tomorrow. Serena will have those highlights for you at six and ten. It's quite the victory on the road a week ago for the Miles Bulldogs, putting up a second-half shutout while piling up 20 points to knock off Water Valley to pick up their second victory of the season. This week, back at home facing Winters, who dominated the series 7-2. But last year, the Bulldogs dominated the Blizzards tonight. It's a good night for homecoming tonight over in Miles. They do the same Miles moving to 3-1 and on the season. They hit the road for uh, next week for an all Concho Valley matchup against Ozona. All right, that'll do it for our 11-man scores and highlights from this evening. Now we turn our attention to the six-man teams around the area, including our KLSD Game of the Week. Robert Lee hosting Blackwell tonight out at Griffith Stadium. Stay with us. You're watching Friday Night Football right here on KLSD. The Blackwell Hornet cheerleaders, and you're watching Friday Night Football on KLSD. All right, welcome back into Friday Night Football. We kick off our six-man recaps from this evening with our KLST Game of the Week, a Division 1A versus Division 2A crossover between Robert Lee and Blackwell. Our Sabrina Hoover has a preview of the matchup. The 1-2 and two Blackwell Hornets and the 2-1-1 and one Robert Lee Steers are eagerly gearing up for their Friday night showdown. Visiting a rematch of last season, the saw the Steers claim a 46-38 victory. The Hornets enter this next matchup with unwavering determination to rectify their past mistakes. It's going to have to do more things right and not have as many turnovers for one thing. I think we had five or six last week. And we got to cut that down. And, you know, hopefully we can hang in there and make them work a little bit and give them a good game. With several losses to graduation, the Hornets now have a youthful team eager to embrace learning and continuous growth each week. Uh, everyone's been filling in pretty good, stepping up. All the lower kids, they, they've been doing really good. I'm really impressed with them. They're out there underneath the fire, and uh, we've got two kids that's got a lot of varsity experience, and the rest of them haven't. And I said, you're having to learn the hard way. With a second-year head coach at the helm for the Steers and the return of 10 experienced players, they aspire to build upon their early season success. I mean, we know, know each other. Uh, I know what players can do. They know what they can do. Uh, some of them are surprising us and, and doing more than what we thought, and that's a, that's a positive thing. Uh, so we're just continuing doing what we do. 
The athletes are geared up for on-field improvement and have an understanding of what it takes to secure a victory. We need to be more physical and aggressive, honestly, because we're not the biggest team, but we need to be more aggressive on the defensive side of the ball. We're going to treat them as a, a great opponent, come out there, do our, uh, our jobs great, and be good. All right, to the highlights we go. 2-1 and one Robert Lee hosting 1-2 and two Blackwell. First quarter, Steers get on the board first. Braden Sherwood able to get outside. He's in for six for the Steers touchdown. Less, less than three minutes left in the first. Brady Pitcock pitches it over. Brenner Sherwood cutting past defenders, makes a few man miss. He's goes just like his brother in for a Steers touchdown to help extend their lead 16-0. Five minutes before halftime, Robert Lee ready to add more to what was an awesome night for the Sherwood brothers. Braden makes it a keeps it rolling dominant performance tonight for robert lee 58 8 the final that's where we find our sabrina hoover live at griffith stadium with more hey ryan it was a challenging evening for the blackwell hornets as they could not contain the sherwood brothers as seen in those highlights of brayden sherwood would ignite this year's offense with two touchdowns and following right behind would be his brother brenner sherwood with three right before this game head coach clint lowry for blackwell acknowledged the injuries just continue to hurt this young team they would find a score right before halftime but then that would be the only touchdown they would find throughout the entire game final score here 58 to 8 robert lee the Hornets now drop to 1-3 and three overall, but they will have a bye next week to regroup. And the Steers now improve to 3-1 and one overall, and they will face Zephyr next week. Reporting from Griffith Stadium, I'm Sabrina Hoover. Back to you, Ryan. Also, Ryan, I do want to notice and tell you that we are now 3-0 and with, with stadium lights <laughs> keeping to, to continue to be on. <laughs> this live shot is sponsored by AFCO Steel. Sabrina's undefeated. Not a rebuild, but a reload this season for the Erie County Hornets. A young group, but one that is looking to make its own bit of history this season. Winners of two straight following an opening week loss, but just by just four points. A battle of Hornets tonight in Mertzen. Buzz, buzz. Erie County hosting undefeated Highland first quarter. Highland up 8-0. Iron Davis steps back, feels some pressure, gets the throw off. The big man, Tyler Henderson, comes up with the catch, breaks off a tackle, turns on the Jets. Erie County now cuts the deficit to just two. Second quarter, Highland up 22-6. Snap goes over the Hornet quarterback, starts bouncing around into the end zone. It goes. Highland player unable to come up with it, but there's Keegan and Wadsworth, who does for Erin County, 22-14. Still in the second, Highland, 28-14. Here comes Erin County once again, Colton Loudermilk. That young man drank his milk this morning, folks. Long touchdown gets IC back within eight. However, that's how they would fall tonight, 50 42 the final just like robert lee and blackwell another 181 182 in menard hosting bront yell jacket shut out Bron a year ago tonight menard makes it two for two 56 28 tonight the longhorns fall next week both menard and bront on the road the yellow jackets head to pretty while the longhorns head over to eden also shout out to the very best falcons 4-0 to start the season a big win 60 to 12 over the beard bears they host panther creek last or excuse me next week and of course, TLCA Midland, excuse me, Midland TLCA in Eden. That game tomorrow night over in Eden, a 7:30 kickoff in that one. Paint Rock also moving to three and one tonight. They get a big time road victory over the Gorillas of Trent to move them to two and two. Paint Rock hosting Lone next week with that victory. And then when we come back, we put a bow on week four of the Texas high school football season. Plus, look at some spotlight games for week five. Stay with us. You're watching Friday Night Football right here on KLST. Welcome back to Friday Night Football. We started the night with four. We finished the night with three. Undefeated. Sonora Mason, very best, all without a loss. Congrats in order to Brady Bulldogs head coach Darren Roberts. They pick up their first win and his first win with the program, 26-21 over Dublin. And shout out Junction, TLCA San Angelo making it three straight wins after an 0-1 start to the season. Don't let those teams get any hotter than they already are. All right, before we go, we'll take a look at some spotlight games we have our eyes on for next week. Central back on the road when they host Abilene Wiley. If you remember that game a year ago, that was the Hail Mary game. Lakeview, homecoming next week. They face Leveling. Brady Cristobal, that's our KLST Game of the Week. And also another Contra Valley crossover, Miles taking on Ozona. That game in Ozona, so Ozona getting a second week of a home game. All right, that'll do it for our Week 4 edition of KLST's Friday Night Football. If you missed anything, head over to our website, ConchoValleyHomePage.com. 
For Sabrina Hoover and everyone here, I'm Ryan Campo. Have a great weekend. Catering for Friday Night Football is provided by Chick-fil-A. Friday Night Football on KLST, brought to you by Randall Motors. Closed captioning for the hearing impaired is sponsored by the Law Office of Rick DeHoyas.